the Bible is often descriptive, not prescriptive. God is not prescribing that this is the right thing exactly, but describing what David did. That's good. Welcome to the Bible in One Year podcast brought to you by two Brits and a Bible. If you like the idea of a casual but meaningful chat about the Bible with a couple of mates, stay tuned in. This podcast is for you. Today is day 97, covering 2 Samuel 8 through 12. If you want a brief overview of these chapters, they're in the description. Awesome, awesome. So just diving straight in today, because I've seen a laundry list of Peteronian verses. A laundry list? When is that saying ever used? In the 1950s. <laughs> <laughs> I would feel like a laundry list of problems. I don't know. I'm going to look that up in a second. But I'm first today because for once I've actually got the first point. Second Samuel 8 verse 2. Pretty early in our readings. David defeated the Moabites. He made them lie down on the ground and measured them off with a length of cord. Every two lengths of them were put to death and the third length was allowed to live. I was just like, first of all, something that Frank Churick says, which I really need to remind myself of constantly the bible is often descriptive not prescriptive god is not prescribing that this is the right thing exactly but describing what david did that's good oh he did it <laughs> but oh i've got a story about the that's good guy i was sat right behind him today Get out. there's one particular guy that does it most others do it but there's this one guy and it was amazing being that close to him he must have done about 15 times wow there was a lot of good stuff in the sermon today, though. So shout out to Red Rocks, Austin. Anyway, um, so, yeah, I just said um, it's a bit jarring as well, because verse five then goes on to say the Lord gave David victory wherever he went. So it's kind of, you know, you kind of get a sense of God's dilemma with us, really, because we're all broken sinners and he's trying to work his glory and plan out through us. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we'll do these crazy things. And then just to finish off my thought, I suppose, 2 Samuel 9, 7, we have to quickly jump to for this. David's then meeting with, um, oh, I forget his name now, but it's a descendant of, jo it's Jonathan's son, isn't Mephibosheth. it? Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth, that's it, yeah. That's a great one to say five times over. Mephibosheth. Anyway, um, and he says, don't worry, I'll show you great kindness and restore everything, all, your, all the land and everything because of who you were. And I'm just like, it's kind of amazing, really, isn't it? He's one minute, he's cutting men down like measuring tape. The next minute, he's, you know, giving effectively an enemy's son, kind of, you know, yeah. a load of that. And it, it kind of just points to how erratic human beings can be, I guess. Yeah, no, absolutely. Catch me on a good day or a bad day. I'm an entirely different human being, so I feel that. Um, yeah. The one thing that I'd say I quite value in that whole thing of him giving the land to Mephibosheth is showing kindness for kindness sake, basically. He has nothing to gain from doing that. He actually does it later on with Ziba, who is actually, I think it was the remaining son of Saul, who ended up mm. getting um, crippled or something when his nanny was carrying him away or something like that. Um, mm. And so this dude was basically like Mephibosheth and Ziba. Where is it? Um, I think Mephibosheth, I think, was also, uh, you know, like problems with his feet. Yeah, Mephibosheth had a young son named Mika, and all the members of Ziba's household were servants of Mephibosheth. And Mephibosheth had, wait, what? Oh. We'll just agree to call Mephibosheth Mephi from now on. So Mephi yeah. and Zeba. But basically this whole thing of Zeba was like, he would have been an absolute outcast in society. Like he couldn't walk. He would have been a beggar. But actually yeah. David, not caring about public opinion and what people thought, honoured him because he was the son of Saul. And yeah. it's just this whole, I love it, being kind for kindness sake, not for personal gain. I realize Absolutely. so often the number of times I pick up the phone and call someone because I need something or because I want something. And I'm really trying to just pick up the phone with people and just, hey, man, how's it going? What are you up to today? How are things? Just to be, yeah. I don't want to be that guy that, oh, great, Adam's calling. What does he need this time? And I think that's a really important thing. Yeah, no, I mean, that's good, man. But it, I'm going to have to say that a few times in these episodes tonight now that you've reminded me of that. 
but um but yeah i think we do get caught up in that way you're right yeah it's it's hard though there's a balance because it's also i think it's okay to an extent but yeah you don't want to be that guy exactly yeah. um, i'm yeah. I, I love asking things of people because i'm as soon as anyone asks me to do something my instant reaction yeah, absolutely how can i help yeah. so absolutely it, um it was messy yes. who would have been the outcast by the way um, yes so then we get onto this big old thing of David and Bathsheba um, mm. in 2 Samuel 11. The thing that jumps again off the page to me here, firstly, it was at the time when kings go off to war, but David stayed at home. So he was mm. intentionally not where he was supposed to be. Um, but then he saw Bathsheba bathing on the roof. Now, I don't know if you've ever read through the Everyman's Battle books. I certainly have a few times. And basically, it's about how men can live holy lives um, when it comes to sexual sin and stuff like that. One of the most important things they have is this concept of bounce your eyes. And as soon as you see something, and I think for a guy particularly, and women as well, I don't want to over stereotype and generalize but in general when you're attracted to and you look at something and you realize that you shouldn't have done bounce your eyes as quickly as you can get your eyes away from it because the eyes lead to thought lead to lust lead to action and you just yep. end up down down a rabbit hole as david did right and she was just coming off her period as well because she was cleansing from her monthly cycle yeah so all these yep. kind of things yep. it's just wrong after wrong after wrong he should have been at war and then when he wasn't mm. just went from bad to worse didn't it yeah, it kind of links in some way to Uzzah's death yesterday, actually, because if you just follow the Levitical laws and what you're supposed to do, then a lot less sin happens. Those laws almost contain wisdom. I wonder why. Yeah, Maybe exactly. Just... And that was actually That's... mentioning yesterday. One of the things that I just mentioned off air briefly, and I think it's useful, is so often we question the Bible in the Old Testament, like, why is this in here? I don't get anything from this. And it's like, all right so you're not necessarily supposed to but that bit in the old testament about the levites having to carry the ark was there so that people like david wouldn't screw up and have their sons dead absolutely yeah no i couldn't agree more i couldn't agree more um i had put next that uh uriah uh david says put uriah out in front so uriah is Bathsheba's actual husband yeah. where the put him out in front where the fighting is fiercest then withdraw from him so he will be struck down and die and I just felt that it's quite interesting to see how this tactic is very similar to what Saul did to David one generation, one thing back, you know, trying to send David off, hoping that he would die in war. And obviously David just won more and more True. stuff for the blood of Israel. And, you know, it actually does work for David. Uriah does get killed. But it's so cowardly as well. And it's just such a different view of David to the young shepherd. Yeah the only one willing to stand up to goliath right true. it's just so true. it's tragic it's tragic to see it yeah. really is yeah. um and what yeah. i found out of that and it's actually mentioned in several like um uh, readings and things about this whatever that word i'm trying to go for is like the cover-up mm -hmm. is actually worse than the sin basically the sin yeah. was having sex with bathsheba the cover-up having a husband murdered lying all this kind of stuff was actually worse and yeah it's interesting how then it goes on to say the sword that devours one as well as the other then gets used against him so that's in 2 samuel eleven twenty five. 25 um, he's saying mm. about david told the messenger say this to joab uh, don't be upset the sword that devours one as well as the other so to make Joab feel better but then it's actually used against him because the sword kills his own family in 12 verse 10 and so it's like ha, interesting therefore the sword shall never depart from your house because of what he's done that's obviously what God said to him so yeah proper yeah yeah absolutely incredibly fascinating stuff I just think the last thing uh from me quickly uh, we should cover is just the baby being killed I'm sure a lot of people are wondering why that is the best I looked into a bit, the best that I could get is actually, you know, God is a hundred percent just God. There does need to be uh, consequences to sins like this. And actually it's somewhat of a mercy because the adultery um, would have led to them both Bathsheba being murdered with the baby and David all being killed. It's actually a level of mercy to yeah. it. That's cool. Well, I'll just finish yep. quickly. I'll see if the apologetics Bible has anything to say on that for tomorrow, but basically the yeah. forgiveness doesn't, take it takes away the sin but not the consequence, not the, consequence. And the fact Absolutely. is david immediately on being called out on the sin by nathan who's one of his trusted advisors immediately turns back to god so important yeah anywho tomorrow's readings to samuel 13 14 and 15 so you beautiful people pick up your bible get reading in the meantime please consider joining us on social media at two Brits in the bible and share this with someone to help spread the word of god 